In this video, I'm going to show you how to create glass in Substance Painter. So you should have an object that you want to create glass for. In my case, here's the object that I'm going to use, and it is a retro vending machine. The only glass surface on here is this panel right here. This is what's going to be my glass. Everything else is going to be non-glass or metallic. Now, the reason I'm starting inside my 3D modeling package is because I want to show you the proper setup to do before you jump over to Substance Painter. I currently have two different materials applied to this object. I have a Lambert being applied to everything else by glass. And then I have a second Lambert or a second material being applied to the glass only. This is important because when you bring this over into Substance Painter, Substance Painter will recognize two different materials and will create two different texture set lists. And I'll show you what that means when we get in there. But it makes it a lot easier for you to work and apply a glass material onto the glass only and not have to worry about having it be part of the same material or just having to deal with having it as one texture set list. So in Maya, in my case, the way you assign a different material onto the same mesh or different parts of the mesh because this object right now is one single object. Everything is combined. So the way you assign a second material onto your mesh is you simply switch over to a object component mode. In my case, uh, I'll select faces, select the glass surface, and then you right click, hold, then assign a new material. And it can be any material you want. I created a second Lambert. So here I have uh, an existing material already because I already assigned it. And I have Lambert 1 and Lambert 2. And let me switch over back to my object mode. Switch over, if I take a look at my attribute editor, here I have Lambert 1 and Lambert 2. So one is for the metal parts of the object, Lambert 1 and Lambert 2 is for the glass. And I did not change anything else. I just assigned a different material for the glass. And then let's go ahead and export. So I'm going to export this really quick as an FBX. And I'm just going to override this file right here. All right, so now inside Substance, let's create a project and use the mesh that I exported. In your case, you'll use your mesh, of course. I'm going to go to File, New, and my template, my output will be Unreal Engine 5. It says 4, but 5 will also work. And I'm going to choose the file. File is the mesh that I just exported. And here it is. I'm just going to go ahead and open it. I'm going to keep everything else the same. My document resolution, 2K. And I'm not going to change anything else. I'm just going to click OK. So the first thing I want you to notice is the texture set list that I was talking about. Here I have Lambert 1 and Lambert 2. These are the names of the materials that were inside Maya. So now they are separate. So that way I'll be able to assign the metal material, the spark material for everything else for the object. And then I have glass as Lambert 2. If I went ahead and renamed my materials in Maya, the names would carry over here. I can rename them here as well by double clicking, but I'll just leave them as this because I know where they are. So this is the important part because it'll allow me to just drag one of the spawn materials or regular material onto the glass only and thus texturing only that glass surface and uh, leave everything else alone. And when it comes to Unreal Engine 4, it is best that you keep your glass surfaces also separate. So that way, even though you have a single object, you might have two or more different material slots in order for you to assign the glass only on the glass surface. And then you'll have the regular object will display the regular material. All right, the next step we need to do is we need to bake our textures. Whenever you bring in a new mesh, you need to bake textures so everything gets baked and then uh, you get to see a more accurate representation of all the occlusions, all the crevices and everything else based on the object. So to do this, you go to texture set settings and then under mesh maps, you bake mesh maps. Here, I usually set up the output size to be the same as my initial setup, which was 2K. And I'm just going to leave everything at default and just bake selected textures. And everything worked out great. Now, one thing I want to point out also, uh, because my glass and object itself, since they are using separate material slots, the UVs of them are overlapping, but it doesn't matter because I have glass as a different material and I have the object as another material. So the UVs, even though they are overlapping with the glass and the object, it doesn't matter. We have two different materials and thus they are separate. 
And here's what that looks like really quick. If I go to UV editor, you can see that my glass right here is overlapping the object, but it doesn't matter because it uses a different material. So let's go ahead and apply a glass surface to the glass geometry. I'm going to switch over back to layers. I have a default layer one, which is empty. I can go ahead and delete it. I don't need it. And I know my Lambert two is the glass, but it doesn't really matter which one I have selected. As soon as I drag one of the smart materials or regular material, uh, it will just apply to the glass or to the object, whichever one I drag that material onto. So to find where the glass surfaces for you to use, uh, it'll actually be under smart materials. So if you switch over to smart materials and you search for glass, it'll give you three options. The two options that I tend to use is uh, the glass film and the other one is the glass visor. So you can use one or the other. Fiberglass you can also use, but I tend not to use it if I need a, a more of a transparent see-through uh, glass like I do for this object. So I'm going to go ahead and take this glass film, left click and drag, and I'm going to drag it onto the glass surface. And this will apply it on only onto the glass. Now, I, of course, I can just uh, grab some kind of a metal and also apply it to the rest of the object. So let's just do that really quick. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna search for steel painted, and let's just use this uh, red right here. And that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Let's come back to the glass because that's the one we want to work with. So by default, when you apply the glass material surface onto your mesh, it will not be see through. And inside my mesh, I do have extra coke cans inside. And I want to be able to see through it. By default, this option is not enabled, and you have to enable it by enabling the opacity channel for your material. To do this, you need to switch to shader settings. On the right hand side, one of these icons right here will be shader settings. Click on it to enable the options for it. And then here under PBR Metal Rough, that's what's set up right now. And you need to left click on it to get access to more options. And we need to switch this to PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blended which is going to be available right here. PBR metal rough with alpha blended. Let's go ahead and enable it. So now we've changed our shader setting to include alpha blended, but it's still not showing up or see through. And that is because we need to enable the opacity channel to be on. To do this, you need to do this in the texture set settings. So I'm going to close this menu, then switch back to texture set settings. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit right here under channels and you need to click on the plus icon and we need to add the opacity. That's what's going to give us the transparency of the glass. Right now we just have base color, height, roughness, metallic and normal. So I'm going to click on the plus icon and choose opacity. And as soon as I do that, you can see that I can see right through this glass and see the coke cans that I placed inside. So as soon as I've done that, I can go back to layers and then take a look at my material. And inside this material will be a property for opacity in order to give myself a little bit more transparent glass or more opaque. And in this case, it will be under the glass property right here, the base color. So if I go ahead, select this glass layer and I scroll down to the properties. Now I have opacity and it's set 2.7. And if I change this to give myself more, it'll give me more opaque glass. Or if I drop this down, it'll give me more transparent glass. Now, of course, I can change my base color as well. Let's say I wanted to give more red, maybe more blue. So all the other properties apply. But now the most important part was enabling that opacity setting for you to tweak the transparency of the glass. And as far as the basic glass is concerned, that's it. That's all you need to do. Of course, I'm going to give you a few more options for you to work with. But let's say uh, that's all you want to do when you export this texture as a final one for you to use somewhere else, for example, inside UE5, because you have two texture settlers, two texture sets will be created for you. One for the metallic parts of whatever object you are creating or whatever surface material that you're using. And then you'll have another texture set list for the glass. So to show you what that looks like, you go to file, export textures, then you set up the output directory 
where you want to export into. So I'm just going to go ahead and export them into this uh, test folder temporarily. Uh, my output template is going to be Unreal Engine 4 packed, file type, everything else is default. And uh, right here on the left hand side, you can see that I'll have Lambert 1 set of textures and then Lambert 2, which is my class. And uh, let's go ahead and export. So you can see I will generate two sets of textures, which then I can use to set them up inside Unreal Engine 5. And here's what that looks like. Here's the regular metallic area of the object, normal map and the back texture, and then my class. And then to get the opacity and everything else in UE4 or UE5, you'll have to set up the materials correctly there. Uh, but that's another tutorial in itself. Now I do want to show you an extra thing. Let's say you want to add extra custom dirt and whatever else adjustments to an existing smart class material that you are using. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete uh, this everything right here. This uh, glass film duty mirror uh, smart material. Get rid of it. And let's use the glass visor. This is uh, more of a clean material. So I'm going to just drag it onto my glass. and You can see that it's extremely clean. So let's say you wanted to use this and then just kind of build up your own dirt on top. So I'm going to open this up and I only have two layers. Again, I have my base, which I can enable and set my base color, change the color of the glass, as well as adjust my roughness and uh, adjust my opacity. Now, if I want to go ahead and add, let's say, uh, a dirt generator, which is a common used one, here's how to do this. You create a new fill layer on top of the base. This fills it with the color, with the base color, which is gray. So let's say I wanted to have uh, some kind of like a dirt look to it. So let's do like a, maybe some, I don't know, some kind of a, like a, a dirt, dirt gray brown color, just for example. And then I get to choose which other channels do I want this fill layer to have. So I, w I just want color. I can do height, for example, I can leave a, maybe a little bit of a normal map buildup of dirt. Uh, I can also you know, adjust my roughness just for that fill layer as well. Um, I don't want any opacity for this. I'm going to disable my normal map and uh, as well as metal. And uh, I mean, I can keep it really simple. I can just go ahead and disable it and only do color. Let's do that. And then it'll use whatever other properties that it has for roughness, for example, or opacity from the base channel. So I'm not overriding anything other than adding some color. And then let's do uh, like a dirt generator on top. This will give me some procedural noise in the crevices or on, on the edges. So to do noise or a dirt generator on top uh, on top of your fill layer or within that fill layer, you first do right click on the fill layer and let's add a black mask. So this masks everything out and then we'll be able to add a generator onto the mask itself. And then we'll have access to the color to change it at any time. And then I'm going to right click on this layer. Well, actually, I'm going to make sure that this uh, uh, black mask is selected. You can see the little white uh, blue outline. And then I'm going to add my generator on top. So I'm going to come up here and add an effect and add the generator. It adds a generator, but it's currently empty. So I just need to set my generator. So under the properties generator, Right here, there's no generator being selected right now, so let's select one. Left click on it, and uh, you can search for dirt, uh, or you can just take a look at what's available. Uh, I'll just type in dirt. If you can do this one step, you can then uh, add more generators as their own fill layers and kind of build everything up from here. So I'm going to add the, this dirt one right here. And you can see as soon as I did that, I now have some dirt being applied on top of the glass. And then I could make sure I have the dirt generator selected and I could go and uh, begin to adjust any of these settings in uh, properties generator and uh, change whatever I need and adjust it for my glass object. If I want to go ahead and change the dirt and how that dirt looks, you can see that it's a little bit of the brown color right here. I can go back to my fill layer color, select that and I can uh, go ahead and adjust it and change it to whatever I need. And then I can go back to my black mask and then go back to my dirt and uh, continue adjusting whatever I need here. Let's change it to something else. But I think you get the idea. And uh, if I need to go ahead and maybe add that height back in, for example, of uh, that dirt buildup that I wanted instead of just color, 
I can go back to my fill layer, select that layer, that icon right here, and I can go ahead and enable my height and add a bit of extra noise and uh, kind of a, that raised noise dirt effect, which is again is happening and being uh, driven by the dirt generator. And again, dirt is just one of the generators you can use. Uh, you can repeat the same thing right here and then maybe do a different generator. You can just take a look at what's available and play around. And that's how you build up dirt on any glass surfaces that you create and kind of create your own uh, custom effect for it. But as far as glass goes, creating glass in substance is fairly simple. As long as you can keep different materials being applied to the specific geometry where the glass will appear while keeping everything else as another different material, then you can just drag one of the small materials right on top of the geometry, it'll apply it, and you just have to change the shader settings and enable that opacity channel, and then you're good to go. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you like this straight to the point approach without any nonsense, so you can quickly learn and get what you need, give it a like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one.